Hi, in this video, I'm going to give a brief introduction to what exactly is a clean architecture and I will show a very small uh, example of it in Golang. So what exactly is clean architecture? So when you are trying to build a system and you are writing code for it, uh, there are a few things you have to keep in mind in case of clean architecture. So first thing is like separation of concerns and the second thing is dependencies uh, among the various components. So let me first uh, mention an example and then I will explain uh, where that example can fit inside a clean architecture. So let's say I want to build an app where I can just create a user and uh, query for that user. So a user can have uh, uh, a name, email ID uh, and I can create a user and later on I can basically query for that user. So this is the diagram of clean architecture. So in this case, as you can see at its center, you are seeing entities. So entities are essentially uh, here it's written uh, enterprise business rules. So these are uh, objects which don't depend on anyone. So in these concentric circles, as you move outwards, uh, the dependencies uh, essentially in, in increases. So what that means is that the outer circle might depend on inner, but not the other way around. So entities are essentially the objects which don't depend on anyone. So in my example, uh, a user struct can be an entity because a user struct stands on its own. It doesn't have to depend on anyone to exist, right? So a user struct will just have its ID, name, email ID, and that's it. It doesn't have to depend on anything else. So next we have use cases in this case. So use cases are essentially application business rules. So that's where the business logic comes into picture. Okay, so the business logic uh, related to user that can be like uh, operations like um, storing a user or querying a user. And next comes uh, interface adapters. So under this name, there are uh, various components. So like uh, you can have controllers, gateways or presenters. So one example in this case is uh, for controllers and what these controllers can do is essentially communicate between the outer layer which is the ui aspect so ui or web that's basically where a user might interact with the application and then a uh, user might submit some data and the controllers might be able to like route it to the specific business logic and convert the data between them so whatever data type a user might give you may need to convert using this controller so that those converted data can be used inside these uh, uh, business logic here in the use cases okay so essentially there are like two things to keep in mind one is like separation of concerns so in this case as i mentioned yeah the entities are the objects which don't depend on anyone and then as you move outside yeah you are having different separation of concerns and the outer layers can depend on the inner layers but not the other way around okay so this is like one example of an architecture that can be various other architectures so as you can see here like a hexagonal architecture so you may not have to follow this architecture but yeah this is one way of writing code for a system so now i will go over I briefly go over a code base in Golang, which kind of demonstrates this clean architecture. It does not demonstrate it perfectly, but it covers the essential use cases as I discussed now. Okay, so here is my uh, folder. So let me first show you where the entities are. So here inside this package folder, I have this entities inside this, I have this user.go. So user.go has only this um, user struct. And as I mentioned before, it only has ID, name, email. So it doesn't depend on anyone. Um, so that's the entity example in our case. Next comes use cases. So use cases are essentially the uh, business logic. So inside this use cases package, I have this uh, user repository interface and that has this store and find by ID uh, functions. So any struct that implements these two uh, essentially has to implement the business logic. So in this case, 
I have this user iterator struct which essentially uh, calls this store and find by id uh, under the hood inside this add user and get user functions so i'll show you later where these add user and get user uh, functions come into picture so next comes this interface adapter okay so this interfaces uh, this is the folder and i have this controller section inside this so in this case i have this user controller struct and that controller uh, essentially has these two functions uh, create user and get user and these two functions are used uh, for this http server handler so in this case as you can see here there is this uh, w which is uh, http dot response writer so what it does is it uh, gets the id and then calls the underlying uh, user iterator to get the user and then it simply uh, sends the user back so that's the get user part uh, for create user it also does similar so it converts uh, the data so in this case so in this case it uh, decodes from body to an actual user entity and then it uh, calls the underlying add user uh, function uh, to store it and then it uh, writes and then it uh, calls the write header function so this is an example of a controller here which falls under interface adapters so essentially as you could see it sort of converts the data between uh, a user input and what the application business logic might use and i have one more folder called this infrastructure where uh, I have one implementation of the interface which you saw before. So the interface which you saw before is here, this user repository interface, which has this store and find by ID. Um, so this is one example of separation of concerns. So this storing and finding by ID that can be uh, done by essentially by like a uh, database and that database can be like in memory database that can be like a SQL database or uh, whichever uh, whichever database you want but uh, this interface essentially creates a separation of concern so that I can create any sort of database without having to change all these code written here right uh, all I have to do is implement these two functions so that example is inside this user memory repository so in this case i have this struct where it is storing the users inside the memory so it has this store and find by id functionalities and all it does is storing it in storing the users inside this uh, user map and when it wants to fetch it it can fetch it from that map so this is uh, an implementation of that uh, interface and finally i have this uh, router function where I'm setting up these routes uh, for this HTTP server. So it has this uh, starting functionality of the HTTP server and the routes are set um, by using this uh, user controller dot create user and get user which you saw before. And I have this main function which starts it all. So what we're doing here is that We're creating a controller and iterator and a um, new user memory repository, which is this uh, in-memory database, which we just saw. And now all we are doing is just doing this router dot start after doing the uh, setup routes. So now I have already started this, and um, if we create a new user. let's say it has id is 2 and instead of john doe i have jack and now what i can do is query it by id equal to 2 and i can see that uh, see it can fetch it properly so this uh, is an example of a clean architecture in golang
one thing to keep in mind is that you don't necessarily have to follow exactly in this order as mentioned here so that can be some overlap between uh, controllers and ui or use cases and controllers um, but the idea is to keep in mind the fact that if you are working on a particular repository and in future there might be somebody else who is going to work on it and they might need to add uh, extra feature or modify certain current feature so we need to make their life as easier as possible so if there are uh, these separation of concerns among the components and uh, a clean a clean way to demonstrate the dependencies among these components then it will be much easier to work on that repository in future so one example can be yeah here as we could create a in memory database i can simply create another uh, sql database and i won't have to change any other code i'll just create another file uh, which has this sql database and all i have to do is change inside this main function instead of this new user memory repository i'll just have to create new user sql repository and that's it so i'll literally have to do uh, two changes of course so one extra file and one line of change here and then uh, it will run fine 